Hi and welcome. Um, how to deploy from Salsa? Um, I am Enrico Zini. I maintain um, mostly web services in Debian. I like. Okay, wasn't me. I swear, uh, I have witnesses. Um, uh, I'm, I'm maintain pro I like to write um, web services more than I like to package. Uh, so I uh, write uh, web services and uh, uh, nm.debian.org is one, uh, the website for the new member process that people use when they um, want to get to, uh, a status in Debian, like uh, become Debian maintainer or Debian developer. Uh, another one is contributors.debian.org, which tracks contributions from people. And so at some point, uh, Aliot was discontinued, Salsa happened, and, um, and uh, that was really nice. And Salsa also has continuous integration. So you can set it up so that when you commit something to Salsa, you have uh, test cases running. So somewhere here, which is hard to see, you can see that... Uh, can somebody guide me through finding the CI reports? Ah, uh, right. I guess I can <laughs> see from here. Okay. That's settings. Settings, right. Uh, no. We'll get there yeah. later. Yeah. That's the one. The rocket. Yeah, they find the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, commits trigger um, a build and uh, running tests. And uh, so that's the last commit that built and passed all the tests, and that was great. Um, and then I was like, okay, but then when the tests are built, uh, it would be nice if the new site would be deployed. And so I played with doing that. Aliot allows uh, to do webhooks. This time I do need the configuration. There it is. Would it expose the secret tokens? Uh, triggers. And good. Scroll. No. <coughs> Not good. <coughs> Out of the box, variables. Ah. What am I missing? What you are searching for? Uh, the webhooks. Uh, it's an integration site. Thing. Right. This is hard. This is for triggering pipelines, I think. For run running systems. Integrations. Okay, um, so you can tell uh, Salsa that when things happened, or well, you can tell GitLab, but uh, the code behind Salsa, that when things are pushed or uh, something, uh, then it will call a URL. Can you read this? So I told it, uh, okay, when uh, something happens in continuous integration, call the code on the site. 
and here pipeline events. So when um, things happen in the continuous integration pipelines, code is called on the site. And then since, um, well, it's a, it's a web service, so I could uh, add a code that's triggered by, uh, by the, I mean, I already ca can implement like views and, and URL endpoints in the web service. I created one. Uh, and here it is. So I get posted by GitLab. I verify, you can set up a secret token in GitLab so that you know it's GitLab calling you and not uh, someone else. Uh, decode things, check that the, the right kind of event, so it's a pipeline event. Uh, check that uh, the build status is success because GitLab also calls to say I started building, I finished building, the building fails and so on. Uh, when I realize it's the right kind of event, I touch a file and uh, this is done. I touch a file so that uh, the actual deploy is not done with the same user as the web. The web, ser the, the web service cannot write on its own code. Otherwise, if somebody can find a vulnerability on the web service, they have arbitrary code execution on, on, on the site. And then, step two, system D. <laughs> um, there is a um, path unit. which basically says if uh, files are created with this uh, name, then do this. And that's a user configuration of systemd, no root required, but this is the user that can do the deploy. So basically, I get notified by GitLab. I verify that uh, GitLab is telling the right things. And then I call a deploy script. I mean, I touch a file which triggers calling a deploy script. The path activation in uh, systemd is quite nice, in my opinion. Uh, then, next bit. I didn't clean the, the flake. Um, next bit, I uh, th that's the code that does the deploying, um, which does some custom logging, which uh, logs in an email, so that everything it does is notified um, to a mailing list. And then, um, and then I verify that the commit is in the branch that is configured to be deployed. I, uh, the files that are created have the SHA sum given by GitLab to be deployed. And summarizing things. Uh, it does a fetch to get the code. Uh, check that uh, the Shasam of the branch that it fetched is the Shasam that built correctly on the CI. Um, and then it builds a GPG keyring with the keys that are in the repository. So there's a subdirectory in the repository with the keys of people who can commit. And uh, um, I create a GPG, temporary GPG keyring with that and use it to verify the signature. 
on the commit. So I don't need to trust Salsa. Basically, I'm pushing a signed commit. My, my key is known by the repository, by the Git repository. Salsa builds, notifies, I fetch, I verify the signature. So if Salsa is malicious and notifies me of deploying uh, pointers commits, um, I mean, a malicious takeover of Salsa cannot generate signed commits. And also, I check that the branch to be deployed is a fast forward from the current one. So a malicious takeover of Salsa will not deploy a past signed commit that maybe had a vulnerability that I fixed later. So people cannot roll back to a previous commit. After which, uh, I'm happy. I run the deploy. And all the, output of, all the output of this gets emailed. And that's my implementation of one auto deploying from Salsa. I built this as a mostly re reusable Django application. So if other people are uh, using Django for Debian services or are using Django outside Debian, but a, a combination of Django and GitLab, this is a working setup um, that, uh, th that can mostly be reused. Um, and it, it, it's uh, yeah, well, free software, part of NM Debian Org and Contributors Debian Org. So this is one way to do it. Uh, FTP Master uh, did it differently. Uh, I describe, if you uh, From what uh, Ansgar showed me earlier, FTP master runs a cron job that fetches from Git and checks signature uh, a bit like this. And then if signature is fine and it's a fast forward, it does the deploy. FTP master uses 100 lines of shell. I use 1,000 lines of Python. <laughs> Uh, but this, at least, this has integration with uh, GitLab uh, continuous integration. So uh, this gets a, a push from GitLab, and uh, on FTP master, it's a cron job running it. Um, still, uh, to me, that was quite a new thing for Debian. Um, I mean, because we have Salsa, we can do this, which I think is amazing. Uh, that so there's a CI, meaning that the tests in the code work not only on my computer but also on Salsa. So they're very likely to also work on the computers of other people trying to work on the site, which is great. And they are checked automatically on Salsa. So when I'm lazy or stupid and I commit mistakes and I'm in a hurry and I push them anyway, they don't get deployed. Um, and also, the whole pipeline of a deploying is not just on my laptop. So I panic every time. Uh, it's not just on my laptop. So if somebody else wants to contribute, they just push. There's been a lot more people deploying uh, changes in the, in the code than before, because now it's just a push away. So I would like to see more of this in Debian, and, and the point of this both is to show that this is possible and encourage for more to happen. As Do you know of any other service in Debian that can deploy from GitHub automatically? Because I may not know them all. Or do any of you do automatic deploy from GitLab outside of Debian? OK. So that, that's the idea. And uh, how to store the keys is an issue. So currently, I have this. So I commit the key in the repository, 
which means on the deploy side, there's no need to fetch keys from key servers. And in a way that's convenient, I mean, on Debian machines, you have access to the Debian keyring, so one can get the keys from there, but this works also in a setup where th there's no keyring of all possible keys. The downside of this is that when a subkey expires, you need to manually add one. So not only send the new key to the keyring, but also update the deploy keyring. On FTP master side, they only keep fingerprints, right? Yeah. Uh, and then they look up the fingerprint in the Debian keyring, and so they don't have that problem. Uh, yeah, uh, design issues. But yeah, there's uh, like already two ways in which this is done, and uh, yeah, I would like to encourage uh, more of it. Um, Questions, suggestions, anybody would like to have this in other services or in other projects? <coughs> So uh, we use a similar setup, uh, not with the web services and hooks, but uh, the configuration for auto-deploying packages. Uh, so uh, we have a, a Git server of our own for Amara Linux. It's a derivative of Debian. Mm -hmm. And what we do uh, is we build the packages in this inner container using the CI file, and we deploy using SSH. So, right. so that's kind of auto-deploy for us. Uh, but is it's not having uh, a lot of quality checks that you are ha you are implementing, mm -hmm. so this seems nice. Yep. But which uh, distribution you said? Uh, Hamara Linux, H A M A R A. Yes. Yeah, um, Hamara Still Linux. Okay? Yeah, it's based on Debian. Cool. Yeah. So uh, I use this particular thing that uh, just a configuration file is. Uh, we could just write a configuration file to build a Debian package in a container and it just pushes the files to the repositories. Cool. Yeah. So, but that that's uses SSH. This is GPG is nice. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. And I, want, yeah, uh, I wanted to use GPG because at work we thought about auto-deploying web services and we did not want to trust the GitLab instance and so we thought that the GitLab instance could ping a deploying machine that had the SSH keys to do deploy remotely with Ansible on, 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 the, the, on the production servers, but that requires an extra machine that needs to be secured a lot. And so the workaround was, well, yeah, we can sign commits. So through that, it's possible to skip. Yeah. I can patch an mdebian org and push uh, something and see what happens. Uh, what do I patch on an mdebian org? Is there a browser? There was a browser, yeah. Filter, what is it? Ah. And I 
think it's a. Uh, you said oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, oh, 2012. Fair enough. <laughs> And it's not just me. How about that? And other Debian contributors. How do you do that? Other? Uh -huh. Okay. Of course, there's stuff. Okay, sounds good. Git push. <laughs> of course. Never pull before checking what happened. <laughs> okay. Right, okay, looks good. <laughs> the shasam changed. Okay, correct. Okay, pushed. So, that's the, the, the new main IRC channel. Something should happen at some point, especially if I scroll to the bottom. Who needs me? Ah, okay. Uh, okay, I'll get back to you later on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay, so there's another webhook that up, up, um, notifies things on, on uh, IRC. So you can tell there's been a push, it's been building. Uh, running, duration, no time. Oh, okay, tests are running. So I can go to Salsa. And uh, tests. No. <laughs> CICD pipelines. It's probably already finished. No, running. Good. Hey. 
it's uh, yeah running the test suite. There was a scroll to the bottom. Thingy. Okay. What doesn't scroll to the bottom? <coughs> So the good thing is that I don't need to do anything at this point except um, be anxious. <laughs> Hopefully all tests pass. Yeah, you should have a lot of tests in your test suite. <coughs> that is a bit, um, I thought they would be faster. Yes. Uh, yeah, GitLab, um, well, Salsa uh, uh, has access to lots of container, like Docker files. I think it uses Docker. Con confirmed? Yes. OK. And you can choose a lot of uh, Docker setups. So in this case, it's Debian stable, but The container has no access to the internet, so you cannot have a test that depends on stuff on the internet, as far as I can tell, as far as I remember. Come on. Yeah, it is testing all the possible user combinations like uh, if you are an application manager, can you read the mailbox of an applicant even if it's not your applicant? Um, and, and all sorts of, like permission checking on an MWN org is quite insane. So uh, can an advocate check on the progress of their applicants uh, and so on. But I was hoping for faster tests. Okay. Passed. Passed. Back to IRC. Which one was IRC? No? Okay. Test status success, duration no time, <laughs> fine. Uh, so this should have triggered things on Salsa's side. And uh, uh. <coughs> I'm opening email and here it is. I need to however hide a bit of the screen because is it hidden? Yes. And then I get mail <laughs> with all the log of the deploy process. Uh, added to a mail. So, yeah. 
deploy happened, uh, the commands have been run. Uh, <laughs> signature is valid. Uh, can it be read? Probably small. Ah, right. That's what I wanted to hide. Uh, it, it checked the signature, uh, it uh, did a rebase. Of, I'm used to rebase when I pull in changes because if I merge, sometimes there's a merge commit, but in this case it checks that there is a linear history from the current commit to the one to be deployed, so it's the same thing. Um, and that's the normal deploy thing for a Django application. And touch of the source code, so Apache will reload the service and removes the deploy file with the Shazam to deploy. There were two of them, I guess one of them failed to deploy and was discarded. So yeah. That's uh, one, implement one possible implementation of how to deploy from Salsa. I would suggest that anyone running, um, um, running services for Debian set something like this up. It takes a bit. There's example code on FTP master and on uh, an mdebian org and contributors.debian.org. Uh, feel free to come and poke me for the an mdebian org site. It's not hard to implement one. Like I've been paranoid and I try to make it reusable. But the general idea is either via cron or via um, push from salsa, fetch, check signature, <coughs> check uh, that you have linear history, deploy. Um, and yeah, this greatly helps people joining your, your, um, your, pro, um, your project, uh, your team, uh, being able to run the test suite, being able to deploy. You just need to add, once you trust them, you add their key to, to the, the key ring. If you don't trust them, you pull the change and you make an empty signed commit. There's a <coughs> git commit dash capital S dash dash allow empty, I think. So it, it's like you stamp their commit and push and yay, done. So yeah, that, that's, the, that's what I have. There's 10 more minutes for questions. Want to see the code again? Uh, want to see the units on system D side again? Uh, or, yeah. Are the units uh, system D for somewhere on uh, Salsa so that we can get back to it if you want? The, I did not know the file trigger and stuff like that, but. Right. Good point. Because currently the units are just on the server. Um, Maybe you could make a uh, repository somewhere to share them? Yeah, uh, I, ha I can give you this. Uh, like a, I, I blocked a little quick guide on systemd. And uh, timer mount and swap service path. Okay. Which uh, I, I guess if you Google for Enrico Zini systemd path units, uh, you get a, <laughs> um, a quick introduction. But um, yeah, wh when, when, like at the end of the talk, uh, remind me because I, com I'm usually confused after a talk uh, and um, I'll publish them somewhere. Yes, definitely. Even just, yeah, in, in a readme, in, in, in the deploy readme or something, yeah. yeah.
Yeah, I've um, at the beginning of this year, I think I was asked to give uh, to teach people about System D, which was a fantastic opportunity for me to learn something about System D. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and these are all the teaching notes that uh, I was allowed to dump on my blog. It can also trigger on uh, um, when a device happens or like um, that was actually cute in, in the system D course that I made. Um, so you can say when that USB key is plugged, the play beeps. Yeah. That specific USB key. So people started uh, playing pranks on each other, saying that uh, when the USB key of a specific person is plugged into somebody's computer, there will be a loud alert sound. <laughs> Okay, then I guess uh, we can wrap it up. Thank you for being here.